Hello everybody, I hope you are well. We've gone over the halfway mark and we're on to week 27. I'm really excited and um, different background today on my table because I'm actually out in my shed. I've got the doors open because it's absolutely beautiful so hopefully there won't be too much background noise with the cars and things like that. A few of you mentioned in one of the previous um, videos a lot of birds you could hear so maybe you'll be able to hear them again. Um, when it was mentioned to me I, I didn't hear it. Um, I'm actually hearing impaired um, and there's a lot of things like that that I actually don't notice are going on so I do feel like I miss out a little bit um, on stuff like that unless I'm really really listening for it so you never know see whether or not the blackbirds and stuff come out singing this afternoon so what we're going to do this week well we're going to look at beads got my bead kit there so you're just going to need a piece of fabric now your piece of fabric it needs to be fairly sturdy we're going to do beaded tassels on our piece of fabric today on our tag so it does need to be a fairly um, decent piece of fabric this is like a Sanderson piece of fabric um, that I'm using okay so I can just move that forward a little bit without my laptop falling over there we go so I quite like the edges um, on here if I'd got one that I was looking for and actually I've just thought about that and I probably should have done it anyway but anyway, by the by, I'd have got one that still had the selvage edge on where it had the numbers and the registrations and things like that. But anyway, I've got this one because I think this is a really, really pretty piece of fabric. So what we're going to do is I've got my tag here. I've got my piece of fabric. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a fold. Now, it's probably about half an inch that I'm folding over that's going to give us um, a ridge. And this is what we're going to hang our tassels from so if you fold it over do a little bit of finger pressing get your tag and then just turn it upside down so that I can work out where that is going to be um, on there and then just mark it just that side and that side there so I sort of know where it is I've hidden my scissors underneath Let's grab the scissors and then I'm going to cut straight down straight across my fold scissors don't like it there we go and then across the bottom okay so that a bit neater on the top okay let's pop that out of the way right so i've got my folded bit of fabric there so then that's going to fit my way around onto my tag there we go so hopefully you can see that i've got a fold there and really this is just to give it a little bit of strength Right, I really want to press that down because I want to get a really nice seam. If you want to iron it, iron it, that's fine. But I tend to find, especially with the thicker fabrics, just doing a little bit of finger pressing works really, really well. Then what you can do is just grab a pin. I've got a new pin box. Can't open it. Still got the tape on it. There we go. Open up. Oh. Let's grab a pin and then turn your flap down and then just pin those bits together. So this is behind the flap. I can hear the kids in the next door garden. <laughs> Hopefully that's not intruding too much. Such a nice day, I don't blame them all for being out. So that's just going to hold that in place. It's just going to give us our... Fold. I'm actually going to move that one down so it is on the fold so that I know that I'm opening it up at the same spot each time okay so we've got that folded you're then going to want a really fine needle I like using beading needles which um, are really 
really really fine it's a really fine needle um, and then I also use a beading thread which is quite a flat thread it just makes it a little bit easier to thread it through the beading needle but as long as you just check that your needle will go through and if you don't have beading thread machine thread is perfectly fine I've doubled it up and put, popped a knot at the end um, because we're going to be making these tassels if you just use a single thread it can end up snapping and then all your beads are going to fall off then's the nice bit of choosing beads um, I've got a selection here um, to use so I'm going to start off I've got some tiny tiny little seed beads Just pull some of these out pop them on the table quite handy having the little dots so I've got some there that are like a selection of um, there's greens in there and this was a mixed bundle that I got um, I've also got some that are a matte bead so these are really pretty um, I think these are from let me check it's a company in the UK um, Spellbound Beads in Litchfield they have a fantastic online shop but I do love um, when we get to go to knit and stitch and things like that um, actually being able to go and look at the beads oh, because they are stunning it's like a sweetie shop so I've got some slightly bigger ones here as well so I'm going mainly for round ones you could use um, bugle beads you could use any type of bead that you've got um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make little tassels that just dangle down so a little variety of beads is really really nice so I've sort of tried to match some of the colors that I've got on my fabric um, I'm not over stressing if they don't match exactly I love these ones these are some of my favorites they're like little flying saucers so we might have to have some of those they're really nice as well because they're chrome on one um, silver on one side and chrome on the other and then I might have one in the middle that's going to be a little heart one maybe at the bottom and again it's got two sides to it so you've either got like a silver or a brown which is just really really cute um I don't know whether or not to put some of those yellow ones in so you just want a little selection oops beads just to be playing around with and what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle of our piece of fabric so it's round about the middle so I'm going to get my needle find the middle and just come through from the crease okay so I'm going to bring my needle through and what we're going to do is we're going to build up a little line of beads right I'm going to bring the camera down hopefully it will stay in focus there we go so all you're going to do is build up your little stack of beads so it's just picking them up on your needle oops oh my little bead there we go just have a look at how long it is you can keep going a little bit so it's quite handy just having them on the table because um, you can just poke your needle through um, and I have another one of those ones just have a look how long we've got now I know that I want to put a heart on the bottom so I might just put a couple more small ones on now to make it into then your tassel so I've got there my sort of like kebab stick of beads okay so just going to pull those through all the way through and just pop them on there so there's our tassel okay so that's tassel number one what I then need to do is anchor this at the bottom so the way that I'm going to anchor it is just pick up one more bead pop that through and then what I'm going to do is get my needle just 
pull that and I'm going to go back up. This is where the beading needles work really nicely. So what I'm doing is I'm going back up. The last one. Oop. Hopefully you can see this. So get that last little bead there. Get my flap. Okay, so if I can show you. I've got my little bead. Let me lift it up a little bit. It's gone out of focus. A tiny smudge. Okay. So that little anchoring bead I've got here. I've gone back up my beads and my needle's now coming back out. Okay. So just gently now. It takes just a little bit of patience. Just pulling it through slowly. And then just give it a little pull. And then what happens is you can see that tiny little bead there just on the end. Okay, so I've made my first tassel. Now, what you need to do is when that's come back through, nope, it's not gone right through because I've gone through the actual knot. That was clever. Oh, no. There we go. Let's pull that through. That's it. There we go. Right, so just pull it tight so it's nice and straight. And then what you need to do is you thread here. Just at the top. You need to make a knot. The reason for that is if then something happens to that tassel, it's only that tassel that's going to fall to pieces. It won't be everything, so we're going to knot after each tassel. There we go, I've got a knot. So if I flip that round. There we go. We have our first little tassel. Okay, so I'm going to come down then um, one side. So it's exactly the same procedure and I'm going to do one either side so that we end up I'm not going to make them necessarily symmetrical but it does look a little bit better if you space them out nicely now because this one's a long one I might do this one a little bit shorter okay so I tend to start with small ones at the top so if you start with a really big bead at the top here it can just make it a little bit clunky okay we'll see whether or not the camera is going to play. I love technology. I think it's amazing. And we've had to use a um, heck of a lot of it this year. But it is a pain in the bottom sometimes. Right, okay. I'm just a bit aware as well that the sun shines. This is the advantage of working in my studio. Um, I've got blinds and everything everywhere. Whereas here, I haven't got any blinds. But what I have got is a screen. Let me see if I can pop the screen up. Just to see if it cuts a little bit of that sunshine. So can I put that there? Oh, yes, right, I need a chair. Sorry about this. I should have thought about this, but the sun's come out. And it is gorgeous. this now it's not going to make any difference whatsoever oh. right I'm back okay. oh, there we go and oh there we go that's better should have thought about that before I started working right then okay so that was our first little tassel that we've made so I was just saying then I don't tend to put really big beads at the top because they can be a little bit bulky so just having a look at what we've done you can then just start selecting other little beads and they could just be lots of little ones 
Okay, so if you just then get them on your needle, just pop them down. Have a look at what works and what doesn't work. You could use all sorts of colours. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that. So I've got quite a little one this time. So pop those through. Then I need to choose my bead that I'm going to anchor it with. I'm going to anchor it with a slightly bigger one this time. So this is my anchoring bead. So I pop that on my thread. Leave it at that end. Just pull these threads just so they're a little bit taut. Get your needle and you're going to reinsert it back up the beads once you get to the fabric pull your flap down make sure it's gone right through that last one back up so I've gone back up my hole there so then as I just pull that through that thread comes through our anchoring bead comes down there flip that sideways there we go just pull it so it's taut but not too taut so we've now whoops we've now got two and then again just pull it pop a little stitch in this folded bit up at the top just double check that it's not suddenly gone loose another little stitch and then in the loop that you've just created just pop your needle through it once oops, twice and then we've created our knot so we've now got two little tassels so I'm now going to go to the other side so if I do another one okay so what I'm going to do this time oops and the pin back in it's because I'm going back to the other side to start stitching um, the fabric together I'm just going to do just a little running stitch just to get me to the next bit that I want to go through and it just means then you're beginning just to stitch that together so come back up at the top okay my fold needle in the fold decide where you want to come out there we go okay so you can see my little needle there it's coming out of that folded fabric okay so again I do quite a few little ones I think this time love beading it's another one of those things that I used to collect alongside threads and things and fabric and stuff and I just had jars full of beads that just looked really really pretty and I just never did anything with them the yellow one. so once you've chosen sort of your colour way if you just keep working with those the colours really do start matching in with what you're doing yeah so I had loads of got a drawer full of beads and I sort of do a project and buy some more beads and I just thought right you've got to start using the beads so this one's quite a little one um, okay I'm just going to get a dark bead so this is going to be my anchoring bead again so your anchoring bead stays on your thread get your needle just pull that a little bit taut just lift it up what it does it just lines all your beads back up again and it just makes it a little bit easier just to come back up so again if you look try and roll that up there we go so you can see I've got my needle at this side it's gone through everything and it's come back out on the fold I've got my anchoring bead 
still on the thread that's really really important if that's not still on the thread it means you've joined it onto everything and it's not going to anchor your tassel at the bottom so because you've created that loop that becomes your anchor okay so you can sort this i don't know what you can see i've got a little gap um there which shows me that i've not put oh, it's not gone in focus um that i've not pulled that up far enough so you just need to give it just a little bit of a tug just so it's nice and snug with that fold again do your little stitch double check another little stitch and then through your loop twice okay so that's going to be our tag today which is lots of beaded tassels when you've done um you're going to have some lovely lots of little dangly tassels there it's going to be up to you then what you do up here it might be that you've got some other beads you might like to do a little bit of beading um i might just pop maybe a little bit of lace or something just to finish that off but i really want my beads to stand out if you want to go a little bit over the top you could always do another folded piece and pop that on Oh, and I see. I'm doing what I always do, aren't I? Where I do things and I come up with an idea and think, ooh, so you could do another fold there. Ooh, and have another layer of tassels coming down. I'll finish this one first and then decide whether or not that's something that I want to do, but I quite like, like the sound of that. Ooh. Anyway, you'll have to wait until the photos um to see which one i actually decided to do so that's going to be week um 27 hopefully the video was all right i've not videoed out in my shed before um but hopefully that was fairly fairly straightforward maybe i hope the weather's been absolutely gorgeous wherever you are and that you are all safe and well we're heading towards the summer hopefully either that or because the weather's warm that's summer going to be so we need to enjoy ourselves so i will see you soon hopefully you'll see the pictures um i'm assuming that once everybody starts doing this i am going to get bead envy and i'll probably have to go bead shopping for different sorts of things um just because you could use anything if you don't have any beads um i sometimes cut up old jewelry or i'll go to charity shops and buy um, necklaces and cut those up i've got beautiful beads um in the past i've actually got these which i haven't used yet they're like tiny little silver washers and these were all on um a necklace and i took them to pieces um i just got loads of them they're fantastic they're brilliant to use the disadvantage obviously is when you run out you don't have any more um but you could add ha, add add anything like i have these little bits of shell they'd look really really pretty um, obviously you're going to look at them from the side rather than straight on but it might be that you put some of those on and decorate afterwards and um, there's all sorts of things you can do so i'm looking forward to seeing what everybody has in their beady stash and i will see you next week happy stitching hello again um i don't normally do do two little bits but i got so carried away with my beading and i was a little bit conscious that i wasn't sure that the video originally um videoed very well i thought i'd come back and um, because after talking about doing another fold i've got a little bit excited about doing that as well so i just thought it'd be an ideal just to come back and show you how to add on another layer and then i can just do the beading again i've just popped a bit of white um interfacing just on my desk um, i'm used to working on my desk upstairs totally didn't think about um having a tablecloth on the table so i apologize if the quality wasn't that cracking last time hopefully it'll be a little bit better this time so what i did was i've now done all my little tassels all the way across so they're all slightly different i've kept the same beads um because then it just gives you that continuity and it does sort of fit together and then i've done some teeny tiny stabbing stitches so the fold that was originally there 
I've stitched all that down so that that can't come apart. And then what I've done is I've taken my next piece of fabric, laid it on, popped a pin in. Where the seam is, the fold, I've done a running stitch. So that is stitched on. That can't come off and it just gives me that fold. If you wanted to, you could stitch the whole thing down. But because when I fold it up, I think I'm probably going to put a bit of lace trim or something along the top. It'll stitch it all down, all in one go. Okay, so if I do the beading again, um, just to go through the technique. If you've got it and you want to zoom through this bit and just have a look at some of the pictures of mine at the end, feel free to do that. Obviously, excuse me, I won't know that that's what you've done, but if you want to keep listening while you're working, thank you for joining me. Okay, so... I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did eleven on there last time. We've got our middle one there with our heart. So you do need to think about now where the beads are coming down. It'd be quite nice for some of them to come and just go over this edge, but I don't think you want them all dangling down because it's going to get probably a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle again, but where I was... The middle you can see for the one with the heart I'm just going to go to the side so I'm just pop my needle in and just make sure oops, that when that goes down pop it across a little bit there we go so that it's going to dangle down in between those two there I've also brought a little bit of pink. I didn't have any beads that match the fabric exactly, but I just thought with this next layer, it might be quite nice to add a couple of um, colours. If your colours don't match exactly, don't put them right next to the fabric. So put a few colours in first and then um, pop those in. So, like I say, choosing my beading needle. This is a brand new one. Usually what I find after a while is they bend because um, they're not the strongest of... Um, needles they are quite fine and I've got a couple of other colours in so this time pop them down my string so that I can see what they're going to start looking like and where they're going to lie and also half how far down I would like them to go Let's try and keep that double thread again. So I'm nearly down at the joint. So I think these middle ones, I probably want them just to come just over the edge. So I'm going to go with a couple more small ones. One of my yellows. Check that. Right, okay. So that's fine. I've sort of gone down now. So I've just gone beyond the um, fold. Okay, so I'm going to get myself my anchoring bead. So your anchoring bead stays on your thread. Just pull that so it's nice and straight. Get your needle and you're going back up the beads. If you pull it so it's a little bit taut, the beads will all line up. This is where the beading needle, if you've got one, makes your life so much easier. So you can see there, I'm, I'm going up through the beads and then the needles come out here. Just pull that and then that little anchoring bead is the bit that loops at the bottom. Now this is going to be the thing you now is as it comes up, is not attaching it onto everything else. Often same thing again, I've gone through the knot. Now, if that happens, just hold your beads and just pull gently and it will just pull it so pull it so that it do not want it to curl up and then pop your needle through to the back whoops come back up and then like I said before do a knot it is worth doing a knot after each one there is nothing worse than spending ages doing this then something comes undone 
and then everything falls off whereas if you're not everything we know that we've got them fastened so there's our first one with our next line so I'm now going to come to that side so I'm sort of in between there we go and then just do the same thing again quite enjoying this it's, oh, oh. <laughs> not enjoying it so much when that happens remember they don't need to be symmetrical unless you want them to be it might be that you do want them all to follow a certain pattern you might want them all the same length and as I mentioned before if you are struggling for beads um, I know here all the charity shops are open now and that's usually one of the places that I always go to um, to get really unusual beads as well so with necklaces and stuff you get some gorgeous beads okay right so I've gone about a little bit longer this time so choose my anchoring bead put that on my thread remember your anchoring bead stays on the thread okay just pull your thread just gently and then pop your needle back up making sure it definitely goes through that last bead you can sometimes miss that one without meaning to back through your crease hopefully this is just a little bit clear I apologize if the video before wasn't that cracking but like I've mentioned before I don't tend to watch them back through um because I've got so engrossed with doing the tag I don't want to have to start it again okay so just go through to the back this is just going to secure it in place do you not now as I was looking at that because I've left that gap in the middle I don't like the gap in the middle so what I'm going to do, this is the beauty of having your next layer. So I don't like that gap in the middle. So what I can do now is come through the gap in the middle. There we go. And oh, it's beginning to like Smarties. I love it. I can just do a little one. Just having your beads out. Some people have beading mats, which are great. But just having them out on the table. I used to try and stick my needle into my box and try and spear um, a bead. That was disastrous. A lot of the time things usually ended up on the floor. Right, so I've got that there. Um, pink. Maybe just might use a yellow as an anchor this time. So just pop my pink, keep my yellow anchor there. Sorry, the beads are all getting a little bit do lolly. Let's move them all over there. There we go. Right, that's a bit better. So my yellow anchor, just pull that away from my set of beads. So anchor bead is there just below your anchor just pull your thread just gently get your needle back through through that last one oh well, no I've only gone through the first one this time there we go this isn't really what you can sit and do on your knee unfortunately this one is a get yourself set up on a table one okay so pull that gently so we know we've got that nice and tight just put my needle through to the back back to the front and 
and then loop it through once or twice is fine it just gives you just a little knot just to hold that so let's flip that round move those over there grab our tag okay so that's going to go there pop the needle through and I will probably that's one of the things I haven't got here at this moment in time it isn't like me oh got a bit of hay fever so my nose keeps running don't think I've got a little bit of lace trim but all I'm going to do I think is just to cover that join up at the top is I'll do a little lace trim so that's going to be this week's tag which is buttons and tassels I'm glad I did that second bit hopefully that's made that a little bit clearer again I'll pop the photos on at the end please continue to share them so these are hashtag 52 tags handmade tag 27 don't put tag 27 just put hashtag 72 52 oh cracky 52 tags handmade 27 I'll put it at the end of the video um, and I really look forward to seeing what everybody does if anybody stepped up to my challenge and has been sending me any tags for our half year um, challenge I'll do some separate videos about that with all the different tags because I'm a few weeks ahead or no I'm doing this a few weeks ahead hopefully this is this is the week after maybe I've received some tags yet quite not sure but I will post some I'll put them on Instagram if you're sending me a tag please put it um, on your Instagram tag me in um, I will do a hashtag for the ones that have been sent as well and I'll add that to the end of this video so then you can have a look at all the ones that hopefully will be winging their way to go up on my um, world map of tags so happy stitching again everybody um, grab yourselves a cup of coffee grab your tag 